So you heard of this 4K thing, and that's like, it's a number, and it's a letter, and it's Ultra HD, but what does it mean? What do you need? How do you use it? How, when's it coming? If you want to know the answer to all of those questions, watch this video, starting now. Now let's start with a bit of a history lesson. The original HD 720p was 1280 by 720, so it was quite a small image. When you blew it up, it started to look a little bit pixelated. Full HD, or 1080p, was 1080 pixels high and 1920 wide, making it look much sharper, especially as displays started to reach much larger formats. With 4K, we are taking another huge evolutionary step in resolution, giving better clarity, better picture sharpness, as well as enabling newer, larger format displays to look as good as those older displays looked with the lower resolution. So 4K is 3,840 pixels wide by 2,160 tall, giving it about four times the resolution of Full HD 1080p. The new standard is going to be called Ultra HD. What are the challenges with 4K? Number one is availability of displays. Right now, monitors are extremely scarce and TVs are scarce and or expensive. But that's going to be changing very, very quickly, as we've seen with a few disruptive products on the market already. Costs are going to go like this and availability is going to go like this. So you're going to be able to have a 4K monitor on your desk and a 4K TV in your living room. Next up is interfaces. Right now, DisplayPort is the only interface that is really, truly capable of driving 4K displays at 60 hertz, which particularly for computer users or gamers is going to be needed to perceive a smooth image. And ideally, we'd love to have it driven at even higher frequencies, such as 120 hertz. But HDMI is working on sort of a way of Catching up, HDMI 1.4 with the latest revision can do 4K at 30 frames per second, which is enough for movies, not in 3D, mind you. And they're working on an HDMI 2.0 standard, which could potentially be a competitor for DisplayPort. The other standards, the professional standards, are already available with 6G SDI having cameras and capture equipment that works with it at this time. While that equipment might exist, it is still more expensive than 1080p production equipment. I mean, you can basically shoot 1080p with your phone, although I'm not trying to say that a 1080p phone is equivalent in any way to a 1080p film camera. It's just the point I'm trying to make is 4K is not mainstream yet at a professional level or at a consumer level. Now, with that said, that's not the only challenge. You've also got players and, and the actual distribution medium. It's not like with DVD, we had DVD. With 1080p, we had Blu-ray. We don't have a physical content format yet that is 4K ready and is, and is ready to be mass produced. So in all likelihood, we're going to see another content war, or we might see it go full digital, depending on how things shake down. Now, I know that this all sounded very negative, but there are a few bright spots for 4K. For example, your PC can already be 4K capable. Yeah, it's not necessarily cheap if you want to have like an ultimate gaming experience at 4K because you're going to need a ton of VRAM, something like at least a 7970 with three gigs of onboard memory to play reasonably high-end games at that kind of a resolution. You got to store the texture somewhere. And the upcoming next generation console from Sony, the PS4, is going to be a 4K capable player through an online digital content distribution medium, which means between between the cameras Sony's producing, the TVs they're producing, and the player that they're producing, they are working on bringing the entire 4K pipeline into alignment fairly soon. Yet another option you're going to have, services like Netflix, Hulu, YouTube. YouTube already supports 4K resolution. Mind you, with that said, it is extremely compressed and I haven't personally observed any noticeable difference in image quality between 4K YouTube and 1080p YouTube. But there's only room for that to improve in the future as opposed to get worse. So what are the competitors for 4K? Really, I think we're going to be looking at another situation where it's kind of like DVD to Blu-ray, where it may, for many users, not offer enough of a perceived upgrade that they're going to invest a ton of money in it immediately. However, it is going to be the new standard if you want to be ready for it. It may be time to invest in a 4K TV, but otherwise you can take a wait and see approach, find out how it's going to shake down in the future, and at least having watched this video, you are educated about this upcoming digital content format. 
Thanks for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from your favorite detailer, NCIX.com.